Hi, welcome back to part two of this tutorial, where we will continue to build up our LAMP stack on Oracle's VirtualBox. So far in part one, we installed Ubuntu Surfer 16.04 and set up a remote connection. Now there'll be a whole lot more configuration to do in this video, so hopefully you will find this video helpful as I talk you through each command. So this is where I left off in part one. Um, I have a server running in my hypervisor and on my terminal screen, I logged in remotely with the command ssh space username at techbox.dev. The next task is to configure permissions for the web server and for the website development. On the command line, change directory to slash var slash www. The root of your website is typically found in the HTML directory. Currently, full permissions are set only for root, so we want to change access to the HTML directory now. First thing I'm going to do is add a new group called Webmasters. sudo space group add space webmasters. You will need sudo for elevated permissions and then enter your password. Next, we add ourselves to the webmasters group. sudo space add user space catchy smith, which is my username, space webmasters and then add the user called www-data. This is the user under which Apache Web Server runs. This also means that everything done by Apache, especially including PHP scripts, will be done with the permissions of user www-data and also the group by the same name. WordPress also uses this user to write files. Type sudo space add user space www-data space webmasters. You can check out the new group with the command sudo space tail space slash etsy slash group. The last line shows the group made up of your username and the www-data. You can also see this information with the get end space group command. Now to change group ownership of slash var slash www slash html and assign the new webmasters group to this directory. We are in the www directory right now, so from here type sudo space chown space dash uppercase r space dot webmasters space html. Then set permissions so that owner, which is the root, gets read write and execute permissions. Webmasters will get read write and execute permissions and everyone else will just get read and execute permissions. That will be achieved with the following command. Type in sudo space chmod space dash r space 775 space html. Now let's just show the new permissions. Since that's sorted, the next task is to install guest additions to enable access to our shared folder on the host and on the guest machine simultaneously. I want to do a quick update on our install packages first though. Type in sudo space app-guest space update. And follow that command with sudo space app-get space upgrade. Now I can install guest additions with the command sudo space app-get space install space virtualbox-guest-utils. You may get a message about disk space, just type yes to continue. Ubuntu has its own dedicated Ubuntu-specific guest add-on package using the DKMS framework. sudo at dash get install space virtualbox dash guest dash DKMS. With DKMS installed, we will require x11 guest utilities to complete the guest additions. So now type in sudo space app dash get space install space virtualbox dash guest dash x11 
At this point, we've installed a lot of packages, so I'm going to reboot the server now. To follow along, type in sudo space reboot and your password. When the server has finished rebooting, log back in with SSH in your terminal. To check out our list of installed modules, type in lsmod. I've got an extra long list of modules here. Since I'm only interested in checking our VBox modules at this time, I'll type in lsmod space pipe space grep space dash i space vbox. Grep will filter out on modules named vbox. You should see two modules like this, vbox sf and vbox guest. In our previous video for this tutorial, we created a folder on the desktop called vbox share. When I list the contents of the media directory on the virtual server, I can see we have a directory sf underscore vbox share. This is a shared folder between both machines. So now anything that is placed in the folder on the desktop of the host machine is also available in the server through this directory. I will need to make sure that we are added to the group vbox sf for full permissions. Type in clear to clear the screen. Now type in sudo space usermod space dash a space dash uppercase g space vbox sf space followed by your username. Same again for user www-data to add the Apache service user to the VBox guest group. Now, when we look at permissions on the sf underscore VBox share directory, we will have the read, write, execute permissions from the group VBox SF. You will need to log out of the server, then log back in to apply these changes. Log in with ssh space username at techbox.dev. To add content to the server, I will navigate to the shared folder. Change directory to slash media slash sf underscore vbox share, where I will create a new file, index.html, with the command touch. Now I can go over to the desktop. Open this shared folder called vbox share. And there is the index page that I've just created. I will use my preferred HTML editor called Sublime Text to produce the index page. This will be a very basic HTML document with tech box in the title. In the body tag, heading one tag contains welcome to my LAMP server. And that's enough to test the web service. Save it, then I'll minimize my Sublime Text editor. Back over in the virtual box, I will log directly into the running server, just to show you that the index.html file is shared on the server also. To prove that, I will type in cat space slash media slash sf underscore vbox share slash index.html. And it displays the contents that I saved just now in Sublime Text to the folder on the desktop. So now we know we can easily add content to the virtual server from a shared folder on the host machine's desktop. I'll flip over to my terminal screen now, which is still logged into the server over an SSH connection, and create an Apache virtual host for our website. On Ubuntu, Apache keeps its main configuration files in the slash etsy slash apache2 folder. Type cd to change directory to apache2 and list out the contents which shows these plain text files and subdirectories. The main configuration file for the server is apache2.conf. Change directory to sites-available and list out the contents. The default website configuration is in 000-default.conf. To make a new website configuration, I will copy this file and call the new configuration file techbox.conf. You will need elevator privileges to work on configuration files. So type sudo space cp space 000-default.conf space techbox.conf and enter your password. Open the new file in the nano text editor where you will make the following changes. Make sure the Apache will listen on port 8080. The server name, we will make techbox and server alias star.dev. We don't need a server admin directive, so I'll remove that line. 
Note, the document route is set to var slash www slash html. Control-V to page down. Include the log level directive set to be info. Call the error log dev-error.log and call the custom log dev-access.log. On the location directive, we will add settings for rendering the Apache server status page. We will view this page to get more information about current statistics of the Apache server. So set handler to server-status. New line. Order. You should have no space between deny and comma. Allow from all. Require all granted. Control X to save, Y to confirm, and enter. Back on the terminal screen, cd space dot dot to go up one level to the Apache 2 directory. Use the elevated permissions editor, sudo edit, on ports.conf to open a list of ports that the Apache service will listen on. Add new line and type listen space 8080. Control X to save, Y to confirm, and enter. We will disable the default site 000-default.conf with the command a2dissite and replace it with our new website configuration file techbox.conf. Type sudo space a2ensite space techbox.conf. Now we'll copy the contents of the shared folder into the root directory of our Techbox website. So type in sudo space cp space dash uppercase r space slash media slash sf underscore vbox dot share slash star space slash var slash www slash html. OK. Now a restart of the Apache 2 service is required to activate the new configuration. So type in sudo service Apache 2 graceful. After Apache has restarted, we can test that the site is enabled. Type in ls space dash la space sites dash enabled. Here you can see a symbolic link to our new website configuration. The Apache status page will be accessible via your domain name. So open up a browser screen and type in the URL http colon forward slash forward slash techbox.dev colon 8080 forward slash server dash status which shows all information about server uptime, process ID and IO stats with its respective client. Under the stats you'll find a list of all the abbreviations used to display the status. Next, to test out the index.html page we created earlier, since we assign the techbox.dev to the local host, the URL is http colon forward slash forward slash techbox.dev colon 8080. And there is our website homepage that we created with the index.html and copied to the HTML directory on the server. To finish the Apache configuration, there are a few more modules to enable. To add ease of use and search friendliness and functionality like rewrite, type sudo space a2nmod space rewrite. Next, type sudo space a2nmod space vhost underscore alias to support serving multiple shared folders on virtual hosts. To make sure you have Apache's mod underscore status module for monitoring the web server's performance, type sudo space a2 n mod space status. With that in place, we are ready to restart the Apache server. sudo service Apache 2 graceful. At this stage, I'm happy that the Apache web server is working well and we spent a little time getting a basic overview on how to make changes and what files and directories and modules are important to the setup. So we'll take a break here 
And in the next part, part three, we'll make more changes and make some progress on building our LAMP stack with PHP and MySQL configuration. And a quick look at using PHP MyAdmin. I hope this was useful to you and I'd be glad to get your feedback. And thank you for watching.